All right, titrations we learned about uh, in class in, in laboratory. They are a way to determine the concentration, a very per precise way of determining the concentration of an unknown acid. All right. So a way to deter determine the concentration of an unknown acid concentration. Also base, you can also find the base. Okay, and you have to know volumes and concentrations of what you're using. Okay, so I'm not going to go too much in this because we've done this in class. Okay, so a base of known concentration. So here's our base. All right, we know that this concentration, let's say it's 1.0 molar, I don't know, sodium hydroxide. We, we have a volume of acid here, let's say 10 milliliters, but we do not know the molarity. That's what we're trying to find. So if you know how much volume you used here of this concentration, you can figure out how many moles you used. Once you figure out the moles here, you can figure out the moles here, and then you can eventually figure out what the unknown concentration is. Okay, but you, but you have to have an indicator that gives you the equivalence point, which is where you have a, exactly a pH of 7. Or a better way of saying it is where you have equal hydroxide to H plus ion concentrations. Okay, it's not always pH of 7. It depends on the acid. There are some weak acids which don't uh, hit the equivalence point exactly at a pH of 7. They might hit a P, it might hit the equivalence point at 9 or something. Um, but um, we're not going to talk too many about those. All right, so let's just do the first one here, okay? So if 20 mils of HCl is required, it requires 46.3 mils of 0.203 molar sodium hydroxide solution to neutralize, what's the concentration of the HCl? Okay, so basically, here is my burette, okay? And I have sodium hydroxide in here, and the concentration is 0.203 molar. In my beaker, okay, I've got 25... 25 milliliters of HCl with a unknown concentration. Okay, well, it took me 4.63 mils, okay, of this 0.203 to hit the equivalence point. So if I find out how many moles this is, that's also equal to the number of moles of this, and then I can take the moles divided by the liters and figure out the concentration. Okay, so the equation is. HCl plus sodium hydroxide gives me H2O plus sodium chloride. Okay, so I take 0 0.0463 liters. I converted this to liters. This is of my sodium hydroxide times my 0 0.203 moles per one liter, because that's what molarity means, moles per liter. And I have to use a mole-to-mole -mole ratio because I'm converting sodium hydroxide into hydrochloric acid. Okay, so one mole of sodium hydroxide is to one mole of HCl. So if I find this, and now this is a one-to-one -one ratio, but in the next problem, problem B, uh, it's a two-to-one ratio. So you, it's going to be very important um, that you factor that in. So this equals. 0.009389 moles of HCl. Okay, so that means I have 0.009389 moles of HCl. I now divide this by my 0 0.025 liters. And I shall get... And I should have uh, three sig figs at the end. A concentration of 0 0.376 molar. Okay, this is a classic stoichiometry problem. All right, just to double check. Oh, yeah. uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. There, 3.76. Okay, now the next problem is H2SO4 and sodium hydroxide. This is a two-to-one ratio. Write the equation out, balance the equation, use your mole-to-mole -mole conversions, same process, and you should have no problem with this. This is based off of last chapter's stoichiometry. All right. Okay, I am going to uh, end it here for that one, and then when we come back, we'll do buffer.